Sean McCann. Greetings. Welcome to a Wake the Dead Chant It Down collaboration. Today we are very excited to bring to you a very important episode that uh, we hope you will enjoy and hopefully not get totally angry at us. <laughs> so today uh, it, I am host of Wake the Dead and here we have Loomis, host of Chant It Down. Welcome, Loomis. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to, glad to be here. Yeah. And we have Mark Passio, and want to welcome you to the the collaboration. Mark, thanks for thank coming. You so thank you so much, gentlemen. Glad to be here. Yeah, and I want I want to thank you, Mark. You taught me more about human freedom, causality, and the true laws of nature more than anyone out there. So I appreciate your work. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Like, likewise. <laughs> so, so that is wonderful, Mark. You are uh, you. You are host and creator of Wake the or, Sorry, I apologize. Jeez. You are host and creator of What on Earth is Happening. And that podcast has been going for many years. And you have uh, you you've had quite an arc of production and you uh, we've seen the, the, the long gamut of your transformation into uh, more of a sharpened sword of truth in the beginning you were trying to take it easy and now you've uh you you really pull no punches and um i admire that and we we are happy to have your voice here for this conversation uh yeah. because this topic is very important for many of us in the uh in the community i don't know if you call it truth community but the the those of us who have been down the rabbit holes have no doubt come across the psyop of flat earth it they uh it has been thrown in the bunch along with 911 conspiracy the JFK conspiracy like we all know like from our discernment we and we have understood that 9-11 was most definitely a globalist plan to uh, change our very our, our entire society towards terrorism and control and uh you know that is true this is a true conspiracy you know and and we all know that jfk was not killed by a magic bullet you know we all know that the convid fiasco was a world culling operation those are all true conspiracies and yet in the mix while you're going on the you know the, the the you see one video and then another suggested pops up and it says flat earth oh check it out this is the real truth you want truth here's some truth buddy <laughs> and that right there is a psyop and i really wanted to get deep into it today and uh mark you are the perfect guest for this because uh, long ago, when uh, in the days of Facebook, uh, when I was still allowed on Facebook, uh, I was moderator of one of your um, your discussion groups, uh, along with Jose Perez, a good friend of ours. And um, there was this moment when all of a sudden, flat earthers just descended upon the chat, and yep. took they took over. And we were fighting them for days and days. And I can only imagine that the reason they fought so hard is because your logo has a round earth. Right. <laughs> one of the reasons. I would say one of the other reasons we saw that um, uh, complete uh, invasion into the uh, areas of the internet that are simply trying to deal with morality and natural law and the understanding of the causal factors, the underlying causal factors of human slavery, um, is that uh, they were trying to garner into their group, into their religion, into their cult, as I would call it, as many um, outspoken uh, people in the truth community and as many um, 
independent researchers in the truth community into their fold. And um, they very specifically were sent out into our community to do that. Uh, and when I didn't bite the bait, um, there was a lot of disgruntled flat earth cult members out there. And um, again, uh, as I've told people many times in my work, uh, like on my podcast uh, repeatedly, uh, I've been repeatedly stalked by these people digitally, not in person, or at least not yet. Um, but uh, um, I've made no bones about that. I, I find that to be absolutely unacceptable behavior that is based in violence because if you have told someone that you no, want no affiliation with them freedom of association is one of the most basic of human rights if someone tells a person to stay away from them whether physically or digitally uh to stop stalking them to stop harassing them um to for it to be continued to be done is a violation of a human being's right to be left alone. I consider that the first right under natural law is the right to be left alone. Um, and uh, they have not shown the human decency. I mean, before we even get into the mechanics of things with uh, why Flat Earth is a PSYOP, um, just speaking to the types of individuals and their personalities that you deal with in this community, they are ravenous, savage religionists is the only way that I could word it. They are savage cult members. That's how completely indoctrinated into a dogmatic system of belief that they are. Uh, I don't digitally harass or stalk anyone. I put my information on the areas of the internet that are under my, uh, you know, you know, my ownership, uh, where I want to publish my findings. That's it, of all my years and years of research. And they're free to do just that. I never go on to flat earth groups and say, I'm going to harass you about natural law and I'm going to force you into an understanding of objective morality. I put my information out onto my areas of the internet and they're free to do the same with theirs. I don't begrudge anybody their beliefs. Um, I don't believe in stalking. I don't believe in harassment. I don't believe in any form of violence, whether it's conducted in the physical world or whether somebody is harassed in the digital world, which is certainly a form of coercion. It's a form of trespass. Uh, it's parts of the violations of natural law against an individual and their rights. Uh, I, I do not engage in behaviors like that. These people do, unfortunately. They're, they're, they're actually very immoral people as a whole, sadly. And uh, it, it's really kind of almost a, uh, a contradiction because when you speak to many of them you and you get right down to why they believe what they believe, it's almost universally the exact same thing. I'm sorry that I appear to be having a flickering problem on my webcam. I could try, if it becomes too distracting, I could try to adjust it, but I think okay. I'll just let it ride for right yeah, we, now. And, we sorry. have your voice and that's the main sure. part, yeah. so that's okay. Um, you know, it's a contradiction in terms almost, almost to understand that these people are very immoral in their behaviors because one of the universal things that you'll find when you talk to flat earthers, if you do talk to them, is that uh, almost universally the reason for their belief system in the, the flat earth model is because they believe in their mindset, in their worldview, that uh, this model of our planet is going to prove the existence of a creator God, and it is going to wipe out atheism once and for all. Now, I'm no fan or friend of atheism. I, I'm not a fan of the of the mindset of atheism. I'm not a, uh, a friend to the atheists who are out there. I've uh, bitterly, um, uh, philosophically uh, attacked atheism as a uh, untrue false religion that holds people back in their understanding of natural law and therefore holds them in a state of slavery, which is the current human condition. Uh, it, I, I find atheism a low consciousness worldview. Um, I, I, I find it something that is a religion in and of itself. And uh, uh, I've talked about this endlessly in my work. I won't really go into a, a repetition of that here, but um, uh, 
the, I feel I feel like they thought they had a friend in me, right? They they had their sky high hopes up that wow, Mark Passio, who's not an atheist, we can really bring him into the flat earth fold, and then he'll be you know championing for us. Um, and that's how it really was early on. Uh, that was their mindset. I believe. Um, and when I, again, didn't accept that role, uh, many of the community of uh, people who subscribe to the flat earth model really got butthurt badly. And, you know, they wanted to really throw it in my face uh, because they, they just felt that I was going to, you know, fold into their whole belief system. And that would act as leverage to continue to associate certain aspects of the freedom community, especially those who are trying to uh, promote and disseminate and uh, bring to a, a much wider um, understanding of the public, uh, the underlying causal factors of the human condition of slavery uh, by, by an understanding of what immoral behavior truly is and why we should not align ourselves with it behaviorally or ideologically whatsoever. Um, if they could, if they could identify that growing movement with, and I wouldn't say it's super large or super growing, it's in its infancy still, but if they could associate that budding movement with, uh, you know, something as patently ridiculous as the flat earth model and worldview, uh, then, you know, they, they could take out the whole, um, you know, understanding of natural law movement, uh, while it was still in its infancy. And I think that was really the purpose of um, that initial uh, launch of attack against me, my work. And it's been ongoing today. It, it subsided quite a bit, but I'll, I'll tell you, um, it, they're still out there. I still get, uh, as I'm sure you guys do, brutal emails, uh, even have gotten some you know, low-level threats of violence um, that I don't really take I don't personally take seriously. Um, I mean, as I've in under no uncertain circumstances told people, you want to bring something like that to me, you're definitely messing with the wrong person okay. and, you know, test that assumption. Yeah, but, I've been um, to your basement, I know. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't really, I don't really want to make it a, you know, a, uh, uh, penis measuring game here and uh, a, a game of threats or anything like that. I'm just saying I leave other people alone. And if other people want to continuously uh, harass me and not leave me alone, if they take it to a certain place where I find it a credible threat, they're not going to like the response. So, um, you know, I'll just leave that at that. But right. um, I think, you know, that was their initial intent was to say, we're going to get uh, somebody who we consider, uh, you know, maybe a burgeoning member of the freedom community, and we're going to move them into our camp. And when that didn't happen, they just unleashed their fury. And uh, you, you really can see how they really don't understand morality. And it's a shame because um, they're, they're basing their entire worldview on like, you know, a, a false model of reality. And they don't even understand what's keeping people enslaved is their lack of understanding of morality. And they display this through their behavior that they don't understand it either. Um, they display it through their behavior that they're willing to lie. They're willing to um, uh, put someone under a state of duress. They're willing to trespass against someone else's rights. They're willing to coerce other people. And it's it's really sad. It's a shame because they don't even understand the factors that are keeping them enslaved. And they actually believe it's about the shape of a planet. Um, and to me, it's almost it's laughable and sad that we have adults in the world that really can't even reason to the extent that they uh, haven't learned basic arithmetic geometry. They haven't learned basic cosmology. They haven't learned basic astronomy. Uh, most people have never taken any type of uh, astronomy class, any type of um, uh, self-observation of astronomical movements. Um, and they really have badly formulated math skills in general. Um, and th they're, they're not applying the real trivium method. They're working from a, a, a conclusion and they're trying to reason backwards to make the data fit their conclusions. And that's not how scientific 
discovery is done. That's not how any truth discovery is conducted. You have to um, formulate an idea and then test it observationally, test it with um, you know rigid means uh, that are repeatable, that are observable, that are testable uh, through experimentation, observation, and experimentation. And you have to be willing to adjust your worldview and model as the data comes in. You can't stay rigidly attached to a worldview or a dogmatic understanding of something uh, when the data is contradictory to that and is telling you something different. And I could give many examples where they they do that. We could look at, um, if you want, uh, I'll let you you know direct where you want to go. But I've basically prepared a few simple observational refutations of the flat Earth model. And if uh, the people who may not even understand what the flat Earth model is, uh, we could explain the general idea of what it is to them, and then I could show people a few basic observational refutations that you don't even need any kind of serious scientific equipment to, to do. Uh, it uh, requires very, very little in the way of resources or money to just perform these basic observational uh, tests, uh, you know, experiments. And uh, I've thrown the challenge out there to flat earthers to do these very inexpensive um, you know, uh, observational experiments and, uh, exactly zero of them have taken me up on even <laughs> just doing an experiment, a very simple backyard experiment. Um, they will not do it period. Right. They, they have ba basically said as such over and over again, we yeah. will never do that. Uh, almost all of them. And uh, I'll I'll throw the challenge out there again later as we go through some of these refutations. I'm sure you have many of your own that you could discuss. Uh, but um, uh, over and over again, I've gotten back the same response. I will not look at the data that comes in from those type of experimentations. I will well, not do it. Well, we can later on in the show we can uh, discuss why they said they will not. It is they're they're caught in a mental trap, right? right? And I think it would be very informative for the listeners who actually do understand science. And uh, I've had on my show my my brother Jim is a doctor of particle physics, and he worked at CERN, and he and I tell told him about flat Earth, and he tells me what <laughs> people what he didn't he never <laughs> heard of it didn't believe it. And, uh, we talked about, it was a great show. And, uh, so it would be good for you to, to for you to discuss that Mark, but, uh, I'd like to give it to Loomis first. To, like, just, do you have any questions for Mark about what he just said? Do you want to take the lead here for a minute? Well, uh, well, um, no, I just uh, agree with what he said. I mean, I've had a lot of harassment myself, not probably to the extent that Mark has, but, um, I guess I should preface this in a way of how I saw this PSYOP come in first, maybe just a little bit of that. Um, Sounds good. When, I, when I started this journey, I learned from writers and researchers like Jordan Maxwell, uh, G. Edward Griffin, David Icke, William Cooper, um, John Coleman, people like that, right? Real researchers and real journalists who understood the truth, discovery process, whistleblowers. And today's crowd, I feel like has evolved to a lot of amateur research and, and childlike behavior in this community. I think that the larger truth community or whatever you want to call it has not evolved their minds since they learned the truth on things. They still think in that sort of black and white with no nuance. And nuance is a major part of this is missing. I feel like um, they haven't developed proper researching minds. And of course, these skills aren't taught in schools, but they have the same mindset as the regular mainstream people, but just different perspective. A lot of, you know, they've learned the real hierarchy of the conspirators, but they still jump to conclusions without using the trivium, trivium you know, method of discovery. They, they, and it's just like, if I say to a normie that I support gun rights to a leftist, then I'm a right winger. Or if I like Trump, I'm a leftist or whatever. There's no nuance in this at all. Not that I like Trump. I'm just saying, you know, like I'm just giving an example, but like, so it seems like there's a right brained imbalance going on here because these elites have lied to us about everything. So now 
there basically is no truth and people have just gone off the deep end with it. It's almost like a paranoid uh, personality disorder. Like when you've been cheated on or something like with the lover or something, you know, you, you uh, have that, that personality, I mean, that paranoid uh, kind of mind, you know, and it's, and it's actually come down to, it's not quite a solipsis mindset, but almost it reminds me of what it reminds me of this quote. And I, I, dug it up just to talk about uh, from the CIA director in 1981, uh, William Casey. He says, we will know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is a lie. So now, though, everything is a lie. That, and, so, and then there's basically no truth. It's basically what well, a lot of these people have jumped on that bandwagon. And, and so everything's a conspiracy it's gone off the real deep end and i i see flat earth as the perfect psyop for this community because they threw this into a hugely distrusting community of people and then so then it's a perfect psyop for a lot of these a lot of people and and i i think i saw this come around 2014 um it, it was fairly there's a fairly like strong unit of people that agreed on the same sort of things. I mean, you know, there's little differences, but then this swept through and ever since it's divided people, it's I've gotten, you know, hate mail from people that are in a religious mindset telling me space is fake and I'm attached to a globe. And and just just maybe to pause for a second, it's it's the exact mindset that exact mindset is is keeping humanity enslaved it's that cult like mindset and yes. everybody must think like us flat earth is the only truth and honestly i looked into it i gave it a good amount of research i i put it through the trivium and i did it and then i put it through in the in the trash because not only did i not did it not stand true i saw the fruits of it, it, it the infighting uh division religious like mindset uh, people jump into ridiculous conclusions, and uh, really, what it is is a lot of simplistic thinking. And the worst thing of all is that all the the work that we all do to try to get the truth out to people, it's put a turd in the punch bowl. Basically, it's it's polluted it. So when I talk to someone who knows this information from the outside or something, um, and then they're going to say, "Oh, I bet you think the Earth is flat too." So it's you know, and it just ruins the whole thing. So. Um, it's almost like a virus that has swept through the community, if you will, you know, and it's emotionally charged. And that tells me that that tells me a lot. That's that's something we may want to come back to is how emotionally charged it is, because if if something's not true, it's not true. And you just kind of go on with your investigation. But these people won't. And that 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 polarizing, emotionally charged attitude uh, shows me there's something seriously wrong with it. But yeah, anyways. Good. That really Good. is the whole purpose of the PSYOP is to – it's a guilt by association psychological warfare yeah. tactic. They want people to associate anything that is um, genuinely true in the um, – alternative research community, the conspiracy community, et cetera, uh, they want people to associate that with this ridiculous notion of the earth being flat. Um, so as you said, if you bring up, hey, um, you know, uh, 19 uh, hijackers with box cutters did not uh, do what happened on 9-11, uh, you know, what do you believe the earth is flat to? You know, it's it's completely an association, uh, you know, tactic. and that is um, very unfortunate that the mind controllers of our world can conduct a psychological warfare op this easily upon the population, that we're still not in a state of psychological maturity, not in a state of maturity when it comes to uh, epistemology, quite frankly, uh, you know, really the, the understanding of how you arrive at knowledge uh, and how you arrive at a distinction between what is true versus what is untrue. Um, people don't have a mature epistemology. And uh, unfortunately, the controllers of our world very deeply know that. And uh, they're exploiting that understanding. And uh, they can invent new religions, essentially, whenever they want. This is essentially what the Flat Earth was. This was the intelligence agencies uh, operating mostly in the United States, but probably a, it's probably a joint operation between uh, intelligence. Uh-oh. 
we got going on. It's going to uh, have I'm, rigid, I'm anyway, dogmatic beliefs. And um, we're going to float that out there to the truth community. A bunch of people with a damaged epistemology are going to latch on to it viciously and uh then we could just let it go wherever it goes and uh, it'll it'll take its course organically and the, the the people who don't really understand how to employ to deploy a truth this a true truth discovery methodology uh are going to organically take it to its logical conclusions to, or r rather its illogical conclusions right. and it'll work to do the end game the end result which again is that guilt by association uh that so many people will fall for i wanted to mention that uh yeah. it works both ways where uh the normies will say oh you believe flat earth too and the flat earthers go oh you believe globe earth too right like it it makes it so they can't receive information from other people like right. i you know i heard a tinfoil hat sam Tripoli the other like last week he was talking and he was saying any any smart guy that starts talking about space i immediately stop listening <laughs> he said he just said it straight up i'm like wow can you believe what people's worldview about the majesty of the universe has devolved into? I mean, imagine the, the, the absolute majesty of the creation of the creator. And it's been diminished into we live on a disc under a dome, like where we live in a snow globe, essentially. Yeah. I, it, it, it's sad. I mean, it's really, really badly sad, quite frankly. Yeah, I, yeah, like this, uh, just real quick, the uh, like I wrote this one down because I wanted to make sure we got to it. The flat earth debate always ends up boiling down to if you deny flat earth, like because the Bible yeah. says so, then you are an atheist asshole, like you were saying before, Mark. You're a heretic. And, right. And you yeah. deny our spiritual connection to God, right? Somehow, if earth is just one of a billion other planets, then we must believe humanity is useless and our lives are meaningless. Why, why would that? See, that, that's a, a completely erroneous assumption. That's a non sequitur. So they're, they're just spouting logical fallacies and don't even understand why that's logically fallacious. Why would it imply that uh, somehow uh, our species, somehow our spirit somehow our local area of the universe is somehow what diminished from the rest of the universe it's not as good just because there's uh countless galaxies in existence like the creator of the universe would just say because i've created all of this this plethora of majesty uh that uh somehow that diminishes all life forms everywhere right. i mean well if that's the case then but there's there there that, that means that every place that there is life it's completely diminished and meaningless and that's ridiculous it's the exact opposite the, the the majesty of creation means that all life is special it means that all life is unique and every place has its own unique place in the 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 greatness and the majesty of creation how could it be any other way i mean and the, the just imagine thinking like it's such thinking of a spiritually immature child. Um, you know, a, as you said, it's it's so unidimensional in it in its thinking process. That the being that thinks like this, they can't even see that they're they're arguing against the creator of the universe. They're arguing against the power of that creation. And it, it's it's just absolutely amazing that we still have people thinking this childishly. And sadly, they're the people who can see other aspects of what's un unfortunately has gone very, very wrong on this planet. Uh, you know, they can see other aspects of the control system. Yeah. And then they just go completely haywire with something like this that, you know, uh, just it, it leads to a complete... Um, state whereby the people who are genuine researchers trying to get the word out, it makes their job infinitely harder. And that's the whole purpose of it. This is what you have to understand that the occultists who are really running the show here, they are master psychologists and they really know what they're doing. They're, they're very, very advanced in their understanding of how people's mindset works, their reaction, their worldview, their hopes, their fears, their motivations, and they know exactly what buttons to push. That's why 
they're 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 beating us so badly because we don't even understand our own psychology as as a as a people as a species we don't even understand our ability to be manipulated we don't even get that aspect of humanity and these people are just chess masters at it and they're just it's amazing the job that they're doing well as i've said many times in my work i don't even consider it like i don't even attack those people like they're just animals doing what animals do that that's what the the real controllers are they're psychopathic lunatics acting like psychopathic lunatics the problem is with the average person the problem is the ignorance the apathy the inaction the cowardliness of the average individual and it starts with their ignorance it, i mean if if you cannot get grasp a basic understanding of some of the mo most simplistic concepts of reality you know, uh, and you want to invent, you know, ideas, you want to invent things that, that don't conform in any way to how the laws of nature really work. Uh, you're going to be able to be manipulated like a, taking candy from a baby. And that, that's what these controllers know. That That's what the dark occultists know. Um, and it's it really isn't even a challenge for them. Like they probably have 5,000 other religions that they could trot out at any time, throw on the table, and a million people will pick pick it up and say, this is my new faith. And it's profoundly, profoundly sad that humanity hasn't advanced beyond that point at this late in the game. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Go ahead, Lewis. Sorry. No, I, I, I yeah, I, I, just, I, I just don't, I just see this childlike mentality simplistic um and you know i i will say like i think it's important to have wonder and look at the earth's mysteries and it's part of being human um uh, you know but th it's become the opposite of being like an open-minded like look at things um it's become a closed-minded thing and it's dogmatic yes. and people have become hubris i've yep. lost friends over this and it's almost it honestly reminds me of a drug. It's almost like it gets them high. It's like, oh, this is the greatest truth there is. You know, it's nope. like, no, it's not. Not even close. No, nope. I mean, and if they only put the that kind truth. of energy <laughs> into the understanding and teaching of natural law, my God, Absolutely. what progress we would make. And I'm not saying natural law should be made into a dogmatic religion like the flat earth, because number one, it's not a dogmatic religion. Yeah. You know, it's simply the, the laws of the universe. Um, so, uh, I mean, I, I'd like to look at a couple of basic, um, you know, observational refutations of their model. But first, people have to basically understand their model. So for, you know, viewers or listeners that do not know what the flat Earth model is, is essentially that our planet is a disk that is uh, embedded in ice. Uh, there's a wall of ice around it. And then there's the two uh, major um, bodies of the heavens, the, uh, the sun and the moon orbit above the disk. So you have a, a plate like disk. There's a wall of ice around the disk and it goes out into it apparently an infinite plane as many of them think. And then, um, you know, above the disk of the, quote earth the the sun and the moon orbit in a circle uh in uh the you know uh equatorial zone of of the uh of the the disk of the earth that's the essential flat earth model it varies in different aspects or sects of the the flat earth community but that is the essential aspect of their model uh the disk the ice wall that surrounds it and the um um uh, sun and the moon circling above and they'll say that you know half of the earth will be lit by the sun the other half will be in darkness now um this surprisingly is one of the most basic simplest observational uh refutations that one could offer uh, and this is the thing that will make a flat earther's mind melt down. If you want to see a flat earther completely just have a mind meltdown, all you have to do is ask one of them to explain the dynamics, the motion dynamics involved in a lunar eclipse. And zero of them can do that 
without doing one thing, which we already talked about. When something doesn't fit your existing model, you must invent new data to support the model's vision. <laughs> and when you realize that your your model doesn't support reality, reality is not supported by your model, then you're left with two things. You uh, say that you are incorrect and you revise your model, and that's not allowed with the flat earth community. That's the that's the ultimate sin. That's the one and only sin is you may not acknowledge the flaw in your model. So that's thrown right out. That's what all religion does. All religion says my conclusions must be correct and nothing can refute that. See, that's the, that's the nature of religion, period. You know you're dealing with a religion when there's no possibility for any improvement in the observation of the model, any reform of the model, any refutation of the model is not permitted. That's what dogma is. Dogma is you're locked into a complete a worldview that may not be changed. So you know that you're dealing with religion right there. And just my definition of the difference between religion and a cult, religion is something that by believing in its untrue aspects, you lock yourself away from moving further in consciousness. So religion is something that is untrue that someone stays latched onto dogmatically, and it blocks the further movement of their consciousness forward into any levels above where they are at. That's religion. Now, when it becomes, when a belief system that falls under the characteristics of religion becomes dangerous to others who don't subscribe to that worldview, to don't, describe, don't subscribe to that belief system, when danger is then uh, present for non-believers, by believers, conducting violence upon them, that's when you've crossed the line between religion and occult. Okay, not occult, but a cult. It has become a cult at that point. Okay, so I would say that Flat Earth does meet the requirements of what a cult uh, is defined as because they have stepped across the boundary line of it just being a dogmatic belief system, and it has become something that they are actually using this belief system as a mechanism and an excuse to actually um, step upon the rights of other people, and that is violent behavior. As soon as you are um, transgressing upon the rights of other beings, you are initiating violence and you don't have the right to do that. And that is um, actionable. When you transgress against the rights of another being, it's an actionable offense. Uh, whether it's the government doing it, whether it's, you know, the military doing it, the police doing it, it doesn't matter who's doing it. Um, you know, when uh, someone has initiated violent action upon another being, they, the person who is on the receiving end of that violence has the right of self-defense. And I would say that they have crossed the line and it has not yet gone kinetic physically, but they have crossed that line into cult territory and they are violating people's rights uh, in the sense of they are coercing they are putting people under duress. They, they, are, they are essentially um, trespassing upon the rights of other people through harassment. That is where they've t many of their members have taken it. They are a proselytizing cult. See, it's, it's okay for religions to exist. I don't have any problem with religions existing. If Flat Earth just stayed a harmless religion, I don't have a problem with that. If, if people want to believe nonsense, they're free to believe nonsense. That's what freedom is. Freedom is you, you're free to be wrong ab about things that don't concern human rights, okay? And Flat Earth doesn't really concern human rights, certainly not directly. They would probably make the argument it does indirectly, but I don't think it does directly or indirectly involve human rights. It's not about morality. It's about the shape of something, of, of you know, the place where we live. Um, that, to me, is not about rights. Someone pushing a worldview onto someone else does involve rights. 
that does involve the flagrant violation of the person's rights who that worldview has been being pushed upon. I call this in my work worldview violence. And Flat Earth is a very, very clear example of worldview violence. It fits all the definitions thereof. So um, I, I consider it a cult. And um, you could ask these, these cult members, uh, explain to me the lunar eclipse. And the reason they'll freak out about that, and they will have to invent something new to fit the model, because just based on their initial model, the, the, the lunar eclipse cannot be explained. OK, so the lunar eclipse occurs when um, some object comes in between the sun and the moon and projects a spherical, a, a round shadow, a two dimensional shadow, which would be cast by some type of a round or spherical object upon the surface of the moon. And then eventually it passes away from the moon's surface. And in the flat Earth model, that cannot be the Earth because the earth would have to be spherical. So, um, and it certainly couldn't be the earth because the disc of the earth cannot get in between the sun and the moon, right? Because <laughs> the sun and the moon are always above the disc of the earth, right? So now, honestly, folks, if you don't believe me, you may have to go out and ask the flat earth community themselves, because while I'm not a member of their community, I'm going to tell you what their answer is to this conundrum, okay? They will not, say, well, the lunar eclipse cannot happen on our model because that's not allowed. The model must be true, remember, right? So you cannot say, I'm looking at my own model and I see no way for the lunar eclipse to occur. So the, they have two basic answers to this. And the first is the shadow object. No, I kid you not. That is the actual answer of the flat earth community. The majority of the flat earth community will say an object that is heretofore unknown and unseen that has no gravitational effect, whether they accept the concept of gravity or not is another story, which many of them don't. It has no ability to uh, be observationally witnessed. All the object is is a shadow it literally is darkness and it just passes in front of the moon when the earth moon and sun are apparently aligned in this fashion only at that time it then comes out of whatever dimension it's been hiding in for eternity and it suddenly makes its way across the uh, disc of the moon, the, the face of the moon, and then continues on its way, never to be seen or heard from again until the next lunar eclipse. And I swear to you, that is actually in the flat earth explanation for a lunar eclipse. The other explanation, which you might hear, and it comes up a little bit less frequency, is that the moon itself does not exist and is a holographic projection. Right. And, and or the face of the moon th that does face the earth is um, some type of a projection and, uh, the, the lunar eclipse is just, uh, the movement of this projected shadow across the moon, just to fool us into believing that the earth is actually a sphere. I mean, what I'm just saying, is, should we need, should we have to have this discussion in the year 2024? We shouldn't be on to bigger and better things about maybe why is humanity enslaved? Why are we a species that is operating in a condition of human slavery, of covert occultic slavery, and how to get out of that system of mind control and how to actually have our rights be intact because we behave in accordance with the morality of the laws of the universe? No, we can't, ha we can't even begin to have that discussion because we're arguing over the shape of the damn planet. And w with such a ridiculous observational model that cannot predict any eclipses, period. And when you just ask them, just please explain the dynamics of a lunar eclipse, their, their mind melts down. And then they come up with the laughable faith-based theory of an unknown, unseen shadow object. I mean, this is how childish humanity actually is. This, this is, is where we're at as a species, folks.
<laughs> I just wanted to interject. There's another one that I've heard where the moon has its own light. It mm -hmm. shines like it's its own luminary and it has yeah. phases. And mm -hmm. <laughs> but but how would that explain the um the um lunar eclipse it, a, a shadow it just suddenly comes across well, it's it it's like some a curved point. it's a curved uh it's because i can't I, I don't know. i'm sorry <laughs> it's almost difficult to elaborate what they believe in many instances especially when you ask them for uh please explain like a complicated motion like an eclipse um that many of them will come up with very 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 convoluted ideas that really make very little sense yeah. So that's one of the basic uh, observational refutations is the lunar eclipse. Uh, and by the way, they're hung up on the idea that you can't see curvature of the earth from the ground. Um, you know, you would have to get quite a distance above the planet to begin to see the, the curvature. All you really have to do is look at any software that shows you uh, basic 3D modeling of the earth and other planets. And just uh, start on the ground and then have the software just take you up. And you'll see how far up above the Earth you would have to get to see the horizon begin to curve. This is one of their biggest uh, arguments. And uh, they really don't understand size. That part of their, yeah. their, their biggest problem is proportion and distance. And they don't really understand how large the Earth is. Um, they don't understand how topologically smooth the earth is it's another big um thing that has to be brought up to people like this and to get them to see things in in a state of uh you know um ratio and proportion because they have a very poor internal um understanding of proportion and um many of these people are people who probably have not really traveled uh they yeah. have not been in an airplane um I, I, I've talked to flat earthers where they say um, I was in an airplane for the first time and I couldn't believe how far, j even a small journey in an airplane, how, how large the earth must be. It, it's colossal. The earth is colossal compared to our size. And then when you look at how small the earth is compared to other astronomical bodies, it's like you could put one million of our planet inside the circumference of the sun i mean it's just amazing you know it, it you know volume wise you could put a million earths inside of our star you, know, you could put billions of our star in the largest observable stars that we can see today it's truly amazing the scale of the universe and right. again it's um it's sad and it speaks to their disrespect for the creator's majesty these aren't people who are doing justice to God. They're not doing justice to God's, uh, the, the majesty of God's creation at all. They're diminishing it. They're mocking it. Um, it it's uh, for people who claim to be rel a religious folk. Um, they're not really respecting God very much at all, sadly. Um, because uh, if we really do understand the power and majesty of the creator, and its creation, uh, maybe we would act a little bit differently too. Maybe it would, we would get a little bit smarter and we would become more moral creatures and we would align our behaviors to the laws of the God of creation because we witness its majesty in, in every time and place in, in our world. And, um, you know, that that's just not the case with these people or many other people on this planet for, for that matter, sadly. I wanted to say that there's kind of a hint of Gnostic hatred for God. Yes. Because we're like, they believe we're trapped here right. in the puddle. Right. Trapped within a wall. Right. And it's almost like Yaldabaoth or what the, you know, the Gnostic uh, Demiurge. The Demiurge, yes. Yeah. Right. It, and, and that's a sad, I find that a very sad model of creation that um, the, the creator is some evil deity. You 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 I, I you know you could look outside at any given night in a nice clear area and just witness a sunset, you know, and tell me that's evil. 
T- t- go, go out in the, in the forest and go check out some deer families right. and tell me that's an evil creation. Right. The Demiurge baby, just made all this stuff like, and it's all evil and it's yeah. all there just to enslave us. No, creation isn't evil. Creation didn't make itself to enslave us. We did that. We right. enslaved ourselves through our ignorance, our apathy, our laziness, our cowardice. We did that. Let's take responsibility for that, and then let's learn and grow and learn all the causal factors that led us into that condition, and then let's transcend them, and then actually become free, and then move on to bigger and better things. You know, how about we start there, instead of thinking that some evil deity, uh, you know, trapped us under glass. They they trapped us under the dome, you know, and it's just like the whole the whole Gnostic version of the, the the cosmology really is uh, an overly right-brained religiosified cosmology that is uh, because they don't see a way out of the moral conundrum because they don't really understand the relationship between morality and freedom that as morality increases freedom increases and as morality declines freedom declines they don't understand the one to one proportionality of morality and freedom and have never made that causal connection because they don't really have a truly active activated logic circuits going on in their mind uh, because they don't see that connection uh, they think there is no way out of the condition of human slavery if if they even have recognized that we are an enslaved species and that's the human condition and they'll go automatically to the worst possible worldview which is that it's made to be this way that's an insult to the creator that's an insult to god because what god gave us is the greatest gift of all of creation free will to make our own behavioral choices but not chaos Law, unbreakable, unwavering, perfect law, perfect order to say, if you choose these things that are immoral, this will be your result and it will be chaotic, disorderly, and you'll be enslaved. And if you choose behaviors that are in alignment with the greatness of natural law, then you'll have order, you'll have peace, you'll have harmony, you'll have prosperity, and you'll have freedom. This is the genius of all of creation. It's not created to torment us with its unknowability. It is created for us to discover how it works so that we can then choose of our own free will to align our behavior to our best possible evolutionary outcome. That's perfect love. That is perfect love of the creator, and people can't see it. As I've said in a a numerous amount of times in my work, there is nothing wrong with creation. There is nothing wrong with the laws of the universe. They are operating perfectly. It's us who are effed up. We're badly effed up, and our worldview is badly screwed up, and that's why we're not getting the, the results that we say we want to receive. We're getting the exact opposite because our mind, our emotions, and our behaviors are totally incongruent, and we are not bringing all of the aspects of our consciousness into unity consciousness such that as we think, so we feel, and so we behave, and that's all aligned with the objective moral laws of the universe. We're nowhere near that state of consciousness, sadly. So let's look at another observational proof of flat earth, which can be conducted for about $20. This is a, an experiment that anyone can conduct for themselves for probably just shy of $20. If you just, you know, surf around a little bit, shop around a little bit on Amazon or eBay or wherever else you, you want to take a look at these objects, two simple pieces of scientific equipment, um, a set of solar observation glasses or what they call eclipse glasses. You don't even need to use them if you do this with the moon. Okay. You could do it with the moon if you have a nice clear view of the sky and you could save yourself 10 bucks and do it, do the experiment for $10 instead of 20. It will work with the sun or the moon. Uh, You could buy observational solar glasses or eclipse glasses as they're called $10 on Amazon. 
uh, for a halfway decent pair. Um, you can get a digital caliper for about 10 bucks. Okay. And maybe you want to even incorporate maybe a ruler or a stick of some kind, you know, just so you keep it the exact same distance away from your, your eye. When you make the observation, you could incorporate like, you know, a yardstick or something, you know, tape the caliber to the yardstick, you know, or if you just hold it at arm's length, make sure, you know, you don't extend your elbow or your arm anymore. Just, you know, a good, nice, steady distance. You could do it like that. And you'll, you'll get statistically consistent results with this observational experiment. So all you need to do is observe the sun or the moon during the course of a day, okay? And make measurements as to the apparent size using the digital caliper of the amount of space the sun or the moon takes up in the sky as they tra uh, traverse the day or the night sky. Very simple experiment. Okay. And just write down your observations that come up on the caliper. It's this much distance in the sky. It's this much distance. It's this much distance. And write down your observation that you, of the results you get in the caliper and just record them. And you'll have a consistent um, set of data. Observationally, statistically, you won't have, you know, an outrageous difference during the course of any given day of the size of the sun or the moon, which means that they stay a consistent distance away from the earth or the surface of the earth where you're observing them. This is very simple geometry. It's very simple astron astronomical observation. You can't get any simpler than this. It's about the simplest observational experiment that you could possibly do. And, um, you know, because their model would project or, or predict something different, right? So just let's look at their model again. You have the disk. You have the sun and the moon go above the disk. They'll say that the rising and setting of the sun and the moon correspond to the distance at which they orbit above the disk of the Earth. So let's say you have, here's the, here's the disk of the Earth, Okay, and you have a stationary observer here. And the sun goes like this above their head. Okay, so as the sun comes closer, they're saying it's rising. Then when it's above their head, that's noon. And then when it goes this way, it's setting. Then you can't see it anymore because it's too far toward the other side of the disk. So they'll say that it has passed the converging lines of perspective and therefore it has quote unquote set. Now, all you have to, you don't even need to do this experiment to prove that this cannot be true because anything that is moving closer to you visually as my hand is right now, here it's smaller, here it's larger, here it's smaller, here it's <laughs> larger. Any object in the universe distance wise will appear if you're bringing it way further away from you and then way closer to the observer, it's going to change in apparent size with respect to the observer's viewpoint. This is a, a kindergarten child could tell you this. Okay. A it's, nursery school student could tell you this. It's crazy because how can the light from the sun just stop? Like we know the property of light, it keeps going. It doesn't right, stop right. at a certain distance and then like, oh, beyond that, it's nighttime. Like, right. It's crazy. Too. Even just looking at how light works on their model, that's right. true. <sighs> so if you um, just look at the apparent size, um, you will see it stays consistent during the day or, or if you're doing this with the moon, it stays consistent at night. It does not get apparently closer to you. So, you know, you look at their model, right? Let's take a disc, right? Okay, here's a disc, an old uh, optical disc, right? Okay, here, on their model, the disc does this. Okay, so when it's here, it's on the other side of the planet, right? And this is smaller. It takes up this much space from here to here on your screen. When it's then rising, as they say, and then coming to noon, look at how much space it takes up on your screen. Then it goes back this way, and it only takes up this much space. It's got to change drastically in apparent size during the course of any given day. It must. So if you just start with a flat earth or saying, just let me understand, is this your model? This is the disk of the earth. This is the sun. Would the sun do this? 
during the course of a day? And they'll say yes. Well, then would it not by definition have to look larger here and have to look smaller here and then have to look larger here and have to look smaller? Would by definition it have to do that? And then they'll start slowly thinking, maybe I shouldn't say anything else because they can't refute the model. The model is God to them. The model is God. So you cannot contradict the model because the model must be true. So they won't do the experiment to measure the apparent size of the sun or the moon during the course of the day, because that observationally must disprove the model. I will not speak to any flat earther who will not conduct this simple experiment. You're telling me what your own model predicts. Observe and test whether that holds up to the scrutiny of data and do the experiment. Zero. I have challenged tens of thousands of flat earthers. Just do this simple experiment. If you don't want to take the chance of damaging your eyes with solar observation glasses, having to even point your eyes at the sun, do it with the moon at night on a cloudless evening. As a matter of fact, you will actually witness the exact inverse of their model. Because when any body, any astronomical body is low on the horizon, before it goes higher above the, the, the observed horizon, um, it will look larger, not smaller, as their model would predict. Because if you simply look at how the atmosphere is above the surface of the earth um, and you just draw a line just do this with two concentric circles make two concentric circles one this big and one this big concentric circles meaning their centers are the same okay and you look at the outer circle as the atmosphere of the earth and you look at the inner circle as the earth itself draw a line from the very top point straight up and draw a line from the very top point of the inner circle straight outward orthogonal or tangential, orthogonally tangential to the inner circle, the inner circle. Okay. Which one will cover more distance in the atmosphere? It will not be the one straight overhead. It will be the one that's tangential to the inner circle. It will move, the light will move through much more atmosphere from a stationary observer on the planet than it will directly overhead. By, def, by geometric definition, the, the very you know, basic definition of concentric circles, okay? The ground and the, the top layer of atmosphere, that's it, okay? And you will see that's the reason that astronomical bodies, when we see them on the horizon, the light is coming through more atmosphere, than it is when it's overhead. So it looks slightly observationally larger especially under certain atmospheric conditions, okay? The, the On a atmosphere. pretty cloudless day, you will not get a whole drastic statistical difference when you measure the sun or the moon in apparent size. In, in, under certain atmospheric conditions, you will get a slightly statistical variation in size, but it will be larger, not ever smaller. Sorry, go ahead, sorry, right. Sean. I was, I was going to say that um, the... I mean, for one, the sun and the moon set down behind the horizon. We see it like disappear from. The, but the the atmosphere is uh, it's comprised of air and water. Like there's water droplets, and yeah. those act as a lens. That's right. So that's why you you get um, the red shift on yes. the moon when you have the lunar because the red bends. At a, a, at a different angle than the blue and the Correct. green. Yeah. You'll, you'll get a slight amount of refraction, which could very slightly statistically vary your data when the object is very low on the horizon. Quickly upon ascending above the horizon, you won't get any statistical variation. It will stay the same apparent size the entire day. You can conduct this experiment for $10 if you want to do it with the moon or $20 if you want to do it with the sun. 
you can do it in your own backyard on a relatively cloudless day. Okay. And zero flat earthers have ever taken me up on this challenge. And I would project and predict zero ever will. Well, maybe, maybe they will hear this episode and they'll, they'll test their, they'll, they'll challenge their own beliefs. Maybe they can crawl out of this. Do you really yeah. believe that though? Because I believe it'll be more death threats. I believe it'll be more harassment. It'll be more angry, vicious, nonsensical emails, um, more coercion because they're immoral people and they co try to coerce other people into believing what they believe. Um, uh, I believe it'll be more trespass, trespass against other individuals' rights, um, more try, uh, trying to force an association with someone. See, this is the big one that bothers me. It's like, if someone doesn't want interaction with you and you try to force that interaction, that's harassment and coercion and trespass, clear and simple. And, and they don't even understand that that's morally wrong. Stop pushing your beliefs on other people. It makes you look like crazy, kooky cultists. And I'm perfectly content to letting you have your beliefs. Believe whatever you want, especially this belief isn't dangerous to freedom. The belief in the earth being a, a, a disc is not dangerous to freedom unless there's an association with the freedom community. And that's what they're trying to push so hard. See, that's their game, folks. Their game is not even to get people to believe the earth is flat. The, their game is we need to associate this bullshit with the freedom community because then everybody else will hear the word it's freedom and associate it with flat earth yeah. with nonsense. That's the real psyop that is afoot here. Like Dave Weiss going to Anarchapulco with all those flat earth people, you know, it yeah. really, after that anarchy documentary about Anarchapulco and then now this, which was a total hit piece trying oh, wow. to make uh, the whole community look like they were, you know, drug deal you know it's associated yes. with drug dealers and the cartels and were just totally selfish uh, narcissists and that was just i'm, I'm not going to say that doesn't exist in the anarchist community sure it does but it's a tiny tiny little fraction i mean you looked at the whole community of people that were there at anarchapoco that was just a a, a great conscious community in general yes. Yes. That, that are discussing elevated ideas and, and discussing morality in many cases some of them are there all about the crypto and the money and stuff like that some of them you know uh are, are there for hedonistic purposes but that's a small portion of that community and this hit piece as you're referring to made it look like it was all of them that's what they want to do with this flat earth is like a hit piece directed toward the freedom community to say look yeah. at all these kooky nuts talking about that that human beings are enslaved. They're all flat earthers. And you know what? Sadly, a good portion of people who believe in, who really do want human freedom are flat earthers. It, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of people. This is not a small group, folks. No. Th this is a gigantic proportion of the whole freedom community at large. And that's the, the, that's the quote unquote dangerous aspect of it in and of itself. This belief is not dangerous where it becomes quote unquote dangerous. I'm not going to say it's physically dangerous because of this. It becomes something that is problematic to the freedom community by association with this, these believers in this model. I'll tell you what, my personal experience, having a podcast, I was sent a letter by Dave Weiss or his people, I guess, requesting to be on my show. I didn't answer. I was just like, whoa, up in the trash. Uh, yeah. Loomis, did that happen for you? Did you? Uh, uh, no. Because he's got an no. app. He's selling an app. Right, And this app every day gives a new Flat Earth documentary. So every day these people wake up and they get more programming. And yep. then they're isolated in their little box and they, you know, their wife leaves them and their kids hate them. And they just watch these doc. I mean, how is Ima that? Imagine oh. how effective yeah. the intelligence agency community has been in taking these people off of the, the true nature of the problem 
on this planet and getting them nowhere near an understanding of natural law. Zero, none, not even close to an understanding of it. And they actually believe they're serving the purpose of human freedom. And they have no clue about natural law. And this is all they talk about and discuss among each other. Like I said, we are a, we are a species of like little infants in crapped diapers <laughs> that, that they could just lead around by the nose at will. And they know that that's where they have us. The, 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 the community of occultists that are really running the show, the, the master psychologists behind every world religion, behind every government, behind every banking institution, behind all the corporations, the whole corporate world. Um, th these people are just absolute psychological masters, and they just have people. They got them in a mental noose. And they're just swinging them around by it. I mean, it's 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 unbelievable. I would right. not have thought it possible when I was even first waking up back in the early two thousands, um, late nineties into the early two thousands, but certainly awake by the early two thousands. Um, I never would have dreamed it would have come to this. Even what the Satanists told me when I was involved with them, they said, wait till you see the religious dogma we're going to invent. But it was all about the New Age community that they discussed that. They didn't talk about inventing things about like, you know, something like this. I never would have dreamed it even possible. And yeah. they invented an entire new religion. I'll tell and, you. and quickly, too. They did it quickly. There's the bait and switch where they they tell the people or whoever like whatever they, the people believe if they can just get beyond the ice wall, there's uh -huh. more land, there's freedom. Maybe we won't have to pay taxes. <laughs> I actually heard that. I was like, what? And so why uh, can't we stay here? These people that? would believe the answer would be run away right. and let all the other slaves just live in that That's pond right. over there. We'll get to That's another right. pond. Yeah. You know? Imagine <laughs> that mentality that, that, that you're only concerned about you. You don't care because the non-believers are over there. As long as we can get all of our believers somewhere else, we'll live free and let them be enslaved forever. Yeah, yeah and, and you know, and it, I think it was David Weiss. You mentioned him. He was on um, Alex Jones, and he said, Alex, the reason for this is they're trying to hide God. Right. That's what they said. And yes, I saw that. Yeah, it's like they have a fear of the expanse of the universe, that this could be uh, – an endless universe. And um, I can just say, like, we talk a little bit about travel. The earth has shown me it's round. I have family all over and I do like to explore earth. I don't like flying, but anyway, but I, I've, I don't think these people leave their mom's basements. That's what it is. I flew from LA to Dubai uh, and went over the North pole. And why? Because these are closer routes. It saves like two hours. And it's because of the curve of the earth. Same with, if you go to uh New York to Hong Kong. And so, and then I did another trip. This is the biggest trip I ever did. I live in Hawaii. I went from here to Australia. And then I went from Australia to Europe. If I would have gone to Europe to say New York and then flown back to Hawaii, I would have circled the earth. So where's this ice wall? You know, it's like, and also just to refute two other things too, like they, the Panama Canal and what's that one? The Suez Canal were created so you can sail around the earth, but these people won't take any of these challenges. They're much more expensive than what you propose, Mark, but like still like these people won't do it, you know? And I've even had a flat earther write me that I, there's no such thing as a flight from New Zealand to Chile. Well, I've done that. And you know what? I didn't go on that flight. It's just, it's, it's crazy. They, it's they, it's very similar to when people will tell me the occult doesn't exist. And I spent right. a good portion of my life inside of it. You know, it's like, you're going to tell me my experiences didn't happen. You know, yeah. it's, 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 it's truly amazing. The hubris of some people to tell people that they didn't even, they weren't on airplanes making the, the flights that they were on, yeah. you know? 
a it can't couple be true of uh, because it's against the model that is my God in my brain. <laughs> then absolutely, we have to invent new data, or we have to refuse to look at existing data. Uh, another couple of quick ones. Um, you can look at the um, rising and setting of the sun on the equinoxes. This is a very good um, uh, observational. Um, refutation. And again, I'm only going to stick with observational refutations. I'm not going to do anything more complicated than that, right? So uh, it doesn't involve going anywhere. It doesn't involve buying expensive equipment. I've suggested one observation that has two extremely inexpensive pieces of equipment. Again, $10 a piece. Um, but in general, these require no equipment and just um, simple observation and recording of your results. So um, this refutation is the observation of the rising and setting of the sun during the spring equinox or the autumnal equinox. And if the flat earth model were correct, the angle of the sun's path at sunrise, the sun's rising and rising path at sunrise and setting path at sunset would be different all over the earth during the spring equinox and the autumnal equinox, the autumn equinox. Uh, yet, um, observationally, if we just simply look at the angle that the sun rises and sets at the equinoxes, it is um, a orth orthogonal angle to the horizon. It is a 90 degree angle at just about every place on the planet on those two days. Very simple visual observational refutation of a flat earth model, which on their model could not occur. And yet we could just check that just about everywhere. You're going to see a slight statistical variation at the extreme poles, at the very north poles, probably above 90 to 95 degrees north and 90 to 95 degrees south. You'll see some angular variation, but not even drastic, but there will be some. But just about everywhere else on the planet, it rises and sets at an orthogonal angle on the equinoxes. Got so another. that's observational refutation number three. I'll offer one more, uh, but if you want to chime in with whatever well, else, go right ahead. Well, real quick, uh, the stars would all be the same if we're all on a flat disc. We'd all have the same perspective of the stars and people in the southern uh, half of the planet see different stars Correct. than people in the north. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's another observational easy one. Without a doubt. And that could involve having to travel or at least, uh, you know, um, rely on the observation of someone who you know is in the Southern Hemisphere. But if you wanted to actually witness that yourself, yes, you would have to travel to the Southern Hemisphere. So uh, that's another good one that could be included in these simple ref, uh, uh, visual refutations. Observational refutations is what I'm going to stick with. So that could be number four, num uh, number five. Um, this is a really simple one, but it would also involve um, either going to the Southern Hemisphere or having someone that you know who lives in the Southern Hemisphere point a video camera and record their results. And this would be just um, looking at shadows on the ground in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, if the flat Earth model were correct, there could never be northward pointing shadows in the southern, low Southern Hemisphere couldn't happen because if, again, you look at their model, here's the disk of the earth above you have the sun, but the sun would be going around at a, a place uh, in the disk that would not ever take it beyond uh, a certain place of the far um, uh, uh, aspects of the disk toward the quote ice wall, which would be the, the low Southern hemisphere. So let's say you went into, um, if you were an observer in, um, you know, uh, Southern Argentina or Southern Chile, or, um, let's say Southern Australia, et cetera. Uh, and you, um, the, the sun would never go past that toward the ice wall. It would always be closer to the center of the disk at all times of the year. So you could never get a northward pointing shadow in the southern hemisphere because that would mean that the sun would have to go further south than a stationary observer in the low southern hemisphere. 
So this is easily disproven because during the um, the summer in the southern hemisphere, when the sun is angularly, if here's the sun and this is the earth, uh, the 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 angular um, aspect of of the earth's axial tilt, 23 and a half degrees with the southern hemisphere pointing toward the sun. When that happens, you can get um, northward pointing shadows. So you just have to go into the southern hemisphere during summer for the southern hemisphere, and you can have a simple visual refutation because you will get northern, northern pointing shadows during an average day where that could not happen during, uh, according to the flat earth model. It's visually impossible. It could not occur in their model, yet we can visually, observationally witness it during a southern uh, uh, summer in the southern hemisphere. Very easy to refute. Uh, and if you don't want to travel there, get someone that you trust who does live there, put a stick in the ground during the summer in the southern hemisphere, and put a video camera on it. And you'll realize that uh, the shadow cannot uh, be doing that if the flat earth model were correct. I know we have some listeners in Australia and in the southern hemisphere of the planet, the hemisphere of the planet. Yeah. And uh, I living in the atmosphere. You... Sphere. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. There's right. no other word for that one. They can't call it the half disc, the lower part of the plate. Right. You know, the atmosphere. There's you're stuck with that one, guys. Try to get around that. <laughs> yeah. So Another like, one. Uh, the breathable please. zone. Right. <laughs> Another one they could do is um, how hurricanes spin. So hurricanes spin um, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere right. and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. I live Coriolis effect. Yes. Coriolis effect. Yeah. And they don't cross the equator because actually I think the earth is kind of bulges out right there. So you'll notice if, um, well, I live in Hawaii, so I don't live that close to the equator, but we do watch these hurricanes and someone could do this. Uh, you know, they, they never cross the equator and if they do they dissipate because they kind of turn the other direction so it's simple you can just watch hurricanes and see if they do that yeah absolutely there's very so many point. other visual refutations that are very easy to conduct and um you know the the main thing this all goes back to is the one problem with all of humanity and that is religious belief systems <laughs> Um, truth doesn't conform to a religious belief system. The laws of creation don't conform to religious belief systems. Human, the human mind has to conform to the actual way that reality works and the actual laws of nature. We have to stop trying to make um, the truth. Uh, we have to stop trying to make our religion into the truth. We have to start making the truth our religion. That one thing that we truly follow needs to be what is good and true. And we're not doing that as a species. We're inventing and creating dogma. We're inventing data that doesn't exist. Uh, we're using the imagination in all of the wrong, inappropriate ways. And what we're really not doing is we're not just observing the big laws of creation. We're not observing the behavioral laws of creation, the laws that most affect what will happen to a human being during the course of their lifetime and in, into the future. We're not looking at those things. And if the flat earthers would understand the importance of the laws of the creator and stop worrying about the shape of a planet in their distorted worldview, they would go much further in their understanding of what got us to this condition of slavery. Okay. And what I want to say, I, I don't really, I don't believe in their worldview. I don't believe in their conclusions. I don't really have a lot of respect for them as people, because quite frankly, I very much consider them very, ignoramuses. Uh, it's, they're people who don't understand how to do basic arithmetic, basic geometry, uh, it, higher forms of math, forget about it, you know. Um, and their cosmology is that of far lower consciousness than a nursery school child. And I can't tell you 
I'd be lying to you if I said I have respect for that kind of intelligence. I don't. I don't have to respect you. I don't need to like anybody. You don't need to respect me. You don't need to like me. What we do need to do is leave room for people to have beliefs as long as they're not dangerous cult beliefs. Dangerous cult beliefs, those are actionable, right? Like when somebody says, um, if, if you try to live free, I don't believe that my my vision or my idea of God wants you to be that, and therefore we're going to come in and rule you in a religious capacity. You know, that's what caliphates do, right? This is like what an Islamic caliphate is. It's like we've merged religion and the government, and we're going to tell you how you have to live, and we're going to tell you how, what God's laws are and how you have to conform to them, right? right. Like the and Catholic it, Church. And too. it'll be the most ridiculous thing. Like, oh, we're going to have to circumcise women in the way that men are circumcised in most places. We're, we're, you're going to have to cover up. No music like this is allowed. Homosexuality is punishable by death, etc., and so forth. When the real laws of creation are don't murder, assault, rape, th- uh, steal, trespass, coerce, or deceive. Don't do those things because you're stealing from other people when you do those things. Learn what your property is. Learn what it's not and stop taking things that don't belong to you. Don't take life that doesn't belong to you. Don't take property that doesn't belong to you. Don't take rights that don't belong to you. Don't coerce anybody. Don't align your thoughts with people who do those behaviors. Don't, don't make excuses for them. Don't condone the, the violent things that they will do. Right. And it's like all we have to do is respect regular beliefs that don't cause initiate violence. And I'm willing to do that. Right. I'm willing to say to every flat earther, here, here's my piece of branch offered to the flat earth community. I'm willing to say, while I don't respect you as far as how I perceive your intelligence level, I don't have to. That doesn't mean that I have any right to do any violence unto you, nor should you have any right to try to do any violence coercively, put me under duress, trespassing against my rights in in a forced association, right? Leave me alone. I'll leave. I've, I've never incurred on your guys' right to discuss what you want or believe what you want ever, once, and never will, because I know the boundaries of my rights. I don't have the right to force you to believe what I want you to believe. I don't have the right to force you to not believe if you want to believe the earth is flat. Go believe whatever you want. Leave me alone and leave other people who have asked you to leave them alone alone. Because if you're not doing that, you've just become another oppressive government or religious caliphate. And I'm not interested in those things in my life. I think those things should be destroyed, right? I think All government is violence, is coercion, is duress, is slavery. I think all religious caliphates are violence, coercion, duress, and slavery. And those things should be destroyed from the surface of the earth. Whether it's round, flat, octahedral, or otherwise, it doesn't matter. Okay? Uh, When you have violence like that, you should seek to stop it and put it out of our world. I want to I want a world free of the initiation of violence. That's what I'm fighting for. And if you want real freedom, that's honestly what you should try to understand we should all be fighting for. And you can have your belief that the earth is flat. Then you can go and observationally test it. You can go wherever you want beyond the ice wall and good luck. Enjoy exploring all of that, right? I think you should be free to explore it. You should be free to discuss it. Just keep it within the boundaries of your community respectfully. I'm not coming into your community and saying, you have to learn what I'm saying in my podcast. Never once ever. I don't harass anybody. I don't send anybody email. Believe me, I don't want to be on the computer all goddamn day. I don't want to be sending emails to people. Quite frankly, I don't really like many people. I don't want to communicate with them. <laughs> I, I, you know, I don't want to be doing this shit, quite frankly. Okay. We're glad you're here. Though, I so want to kick you. back in a bowling alley with a beer and, and roll a little bit. That's what I want to do. And I very rarely ever do that because I'm doing this shit, right? It's like 
I, I, I didn't ever want to have to teach people natural law. I'm dragged into that kicking and screaming because I realize how ignorant people are. And it, if it gets worse, it's all of our asses. It's all of our slavery. And it's not the slavery of people who believe in flat earth versus people who believe in sphere earth. It's the slavery of everybody, right? We're all being brought under this oppression. Right. I'm willing to let people have their harmless religious belief systems. And if they simply leave me out of it, I'm not in this, that, that religious belief. I'm not in that cult and I don't want to be harassed to be in it. And that's my right to be left out of it. That's called freedom of association. And you have the freedom of association to go and affiliate with other people who believe the earth is flat. Go do it. Knock yourselves out, guys. You know, stop trying to force your religion onto me. That's the same as what government does. That's the same as what religious caliphates do. And that makes you an immoral and violent person. Just don't do those things. That's all. There's my olive branch to the flat earth community for what it's worth. <laughs> that's great. I, I just wanted to say what you were earlier, you were talking about how to get how they can grow out of this. And uh, you say on your show many times about the first step in learning the occult is to stop lying to yourself. That's right. Yeah. That's the first dictate of the uh, hermetic pathway of initiation into the occult world and into true occult philosophy. Um, there's five steps to that initiatory process. The first is stop lying to yourself, because if you tell yourself things that just continue to reinforce your dogmatic belief systems, you're very willing to lie to other people as well, because you don't check yourself first. Check yourself. Check your assumptions. Check your axioms, your underlying foundational beliefs upon which you build everything else. If you build on a false axiom, you're building on unsolid foundation. And then everything you built on top of that's going to be, is going to be unsturdy and uh, is not going to provide, that's not going to provide a proper foundational framework of any I uh, ideology or philosophy. Number two is stop dreaming. Stop um, thinking that the world works a, a way other than what, how it actually works. You know, don't project a rosy world vision onto a situation of slavery. Try to really understand the laws of creation, both physical and spiritual, both seen and unseen, both those which affect matter and those which were which affect the consequences of our behaviors, of our chosen behaviors based on our free will choices. That's the second part. Um, the third part is um, uh, stop lying, stop dreaming, uh, learn how to think, Le really engage the trivium process. Yeah. This is how you really grow in your understanding of how reality works. You learn the true truth discovery methodology or the true scientific methodology. And that comes from trying to form some type of hypothesis about how a model of reality works and then testing it. You test that with observation, with measurement, with, uh, you know, um, uh, experimentation. There's and no then contradictions in nature. That's right. correct. So that's how you know what's yeah. real. Right. So you right. want to align with that concept of no contradiction. So if there are contradictions in your projected hypothesis of your model and your observational data, then you have to go back and you have to revise the model. This is what I'm just simply explaining with these observational refutations is go and look at the data and revise the model. And the easiest one is just look at the sun and the moon traverse the sky. They don't get go, start way far away and then get way close to you and then do the same thing. They're, they're basically the same size in the sky during the course of a day, which means that the distance stays constant. And that's a proof of that we're rotating. We're, 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 our frame of reference is just staying basically the same distance away. And that's why it doesn't grow or shrink at all. OK, so that will help you revise the model. And so the whole trivium process is gather your data, test your data or go through all of the observational 
experimentation that you need to so that you weed out all inconsistencies because as you said nature is consistent with itself when there's an inconsistency that means it doesn't meet the criteria for the truth discovery methodology and it has to be removed from the model and then finally you're going to publish your results you know you have to share your data with other people and that's making media publishing in books publishing in uh you know podcasts etc you know just speak what you have learned and this is grammar logic and rhetoric grammar are putting all the pieces the informational pieces together logic is doing the uh informational transforms upon the data to weed out logical inconsistencies and then rhetoric is publishing your results this is knowledge understanding and wisdom in the ancient version of the trivium wisdom means right action it's doing the right thing with what you have come to know and to understand how things work that's the third part of the initiatory process of learn how to think uh, the fourth is live in the present moment this means don't live in the past, don't live in the future, don't um, dwell on the past because it's gone and you'll never, you're never going to get any past moments back and don't live in perpetual anxiety over the future. But what it also means is pay attention, learn how to control the thoughts of the mind and quiet them so you can bring in new data. Because if this is always full and chattering and there's no space in the mind, nothing new can come in to teach oneself. You cannot be taught if the mind is just rampaging all the time with its chatter. The internal dialogue has to be taught to be tamed. It doesn't mean you completely and utterly devastate all thought and their silence permanently. No, uh, that's not what meditative techniques try to teach you to do. They teach you how to calm the chatter of the mind, calm the internal dialogue such that when new information is speaking, you're able to pay full present moment attention to the new data that's coming in. That's the fourth step. The fifth step is activate the physical body because you're going to need it in the probable coming physical kinetic uh, activity that we're going to probably be experiencing in the not too distant future, either during a collapse situation or a situation of kinetic warfare, which uh, is uh, looking very probable. It's looking like less than conjecture now as it used to and looking more like a discrete possibility. So take care of your physical health, take care of your mental health. If at all possible, uh, pay even attention to your emotional health as difficult as that can be to do in these challenging times uh the all of the aspects of health are critically important and should be paid close attention to because you will need to be in a healthy state to survive what's coming and to prosper in the future so those are the initiatic processes that can really help anybody whether they're a religionist, whether they're a flat earther or whether they're just an, an average person. Uh, and they can even help people who have garnered a, a decent amount of understanding about how the laws, the behavioral laws of our reality function and the unfortunate condition that we find humanity in at this time. It can help everybody. It's not for a select elite groups of people. It's for every human being, that entire initiatory process. I speak about it a lot in my work at What on Earth is Happening. You could find some more about it there. <laughs> well That's said. Great. Yeah. Ernest, do you do you want to take the the floor for a second here? Do we have more questions for for Marth before we go to? I wanted to bring up that Cass Sunstein paper, but I uh, why don't you go ahead questions. and bring that up? I okay. I just I just know like my biggest like I don't even have beef with people. Like I, I don't care what people think either. They can do whatever the hell they want, but when it comes to the work that we do, uh, I don't like being associated with people that are polluting this and right. that's that's one of my biggest pet peeves like yeah i don't care what people believe in they can believe in santa claus they can believe in you know um giant aliens that are going to come and save us but on in the end i just want the real work not to be polluted and and that bothers me a lot because i'm going to get associated with that just like q like people think that uh you know we talk about this stuff oh you must like Q and Trump, you know, no, I don't, you know, I, I don't even 
believe in government, you know, and then that's the kind of things that we have to work through that just to explain these people and they just write you off immediately. So it's, yeah, it's hard. It's See, hard. you're free to associate who yeah. you wish to associate with. They're yeah. free to associate who they wish to associate with. I don't try to force association. They do try to force association. And that's again, the nature of the PSYOP. The nature of the PSYOP isn't really even about the shape of the planet. The nature of the PSYOP is about forcing association with this movement, with the freedom community. It's like you said about Trump, like people who believe in Q and Trump and all of that, you know, and are political in the, every aspect of their makeup. And then like, I'll walk out in public and because I look like a masculine guy, people be like, you must be a Trump supporter. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with that megalomaniac. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not, I don't believe in politics. You know, I'm right. going to go and vote, vote for a master. I don't need a master. I, I have mastery over myself. You know, mm -hmm. I don't need someone else governing me. I don't want anybody to set laws because the creator has already done that. And n no man, woman, or group of people will ever set any laws that trump the laws of the creator of the universe. The end. You know, yeah. those are the yeah. only laws anybody needs to live under. Problem is they don't know them because they're so ignorant and they're worried about the shape of a planet instead of the actual laws of God. What do you think is more important, the shape of a planet or the laws of the creator that govern human behavior and whether we're in alignment with morality or not? And if we're out of alignment with it, we're slaves. And if we're in alignment with it, we're free. You think you don't think that's a little bit more important? Just a tiny sliver more important than what these people are, are trying to push on other people. That's what blows my mind is what the intelligence sorcerers can actually get human beings to believe is important. And they know how easily swayed that when you hear what Sean's going to bring up about Sunstein's paper, you know, it's amazing. They, they, these people know exactly where they have humanity. They know exactly how tight of a grip they have on the human mind. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's almost, it's like, it's an occult mockery. I mean, it's it is. Up mockery. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, everybody that is watching can see uh, I'm sharing a screen here. This is a paper uh, published for Harvard University Law School, uh, University of Chicago Law School, and uh, it's titled Conspiracy Theories, written by Cass R. Sunstein, University of Chicago Law School, and Adrian Vermeule from Harvard University, Harvard Law School. And this paper can be found, uh, you can download it for free at ssrn.com slash abstract equals one zero eight four five eight five so that's for the listeners they can write it down on the pen those of you that are watching so okay written in 08 all right this is the abstract i'm just going to read the abstract here it's just one paragraph okay many millions of people hold conspiracy theories they believe that Powerful people have worked together in order to withhold the truth about some important practice or some terrible event. A recent example is the belief, widespread in some parts of the world, that the attacks of 9-11 were carried out not by Al-Qaeda, but by Israel or the United States. So that's their problem. That's the, what they're trying to fix, right? So anyway, they're framing it. Okay, so back to the words here. Those who subscribe to conspiracy theories may create serious risks, including risks of violence, and the existence of such theories raises significant challenges for policy and law. The first challenge is to understand the mechanisms by which conspiracy theories prosper. The second challenge is to understand how such theories might be undermined. Such theories typically spread as a result of in. Uh, in uh, uh, identifiable. identifiable cognitive blunders. <laughs> uh, cognitive blunder on my part right there reading. Uh, so operating in conjunction with informational and reputational influences. A distinctive feature of conspiracy theories is their self-sealing quality. That's very important. Conspiracy theorists are not likely to be persuaded by an attempt to dispel their theories. 
They may even characterize that very attempt as further proof of the conspiracy. Because those who hold conspiracy theories typically suffer from a crippled epistemology, which Mark brought up earlier, uh, in accordance with which it is rational to hold such theories. The best response consists in cognitive infiltration of extremist groups. Yep. That's the anarchist Meaning community. we'll infiltrate the freedom community yes. who actually doesn't want to live under slavery right. and will associate it with all of these ridiculous conspiracy theories. This is why I don't particularly – prefer the term conspiracy theorist at all. I, I don't consider myself a theorist of any kind, and I don't have an, a, a crippled epistemology. I know exactly how epistemology works and how to conduct an epistemological uh, uh, seeking and uh, really come to accurate conclusions about how things work and what has been or has not been done. I don't consider myself a conspiracy theorist at all. I call myself a whistleblower. I'm a whistleblower of the occult world and how it works and operates in all of the institutions of our society. But yeah, Sunstein is talking about how he and the, the intelligence agencies really understand people's crippled epistemology, that they do not know how to arrive at knowledge at all. They just have out of control dogmatic belief systems and that's why people believe in nonsensical conspiracy theories such as you know the earth is flat and they're hiding you know that from us they're hiding a lot of much more important things from us like how natural law works and uh people not knowing that leads them directly into slavery people even if you know the it were true that they're hiding the shape of the planet from us that that's not going to put us into slavery because believing whatever you want about the shape of a planet isn't immoral you know not understanding how rights work what rights are what violations of rights actually are is immoral you're going to be led into in that level of ignorance you're going to be led to do or condone all kinds of immoral things and that's what's going to make human beings completely enslaved that's right 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 so so they're infiltrating the people that believe the truth of the globe and the heliocentric model and they're they're breaking that apart and like in the the words of uh if if the the listeners read this themselves they'll they'll talk about deconstructing the uh the basic elements of knowledge within the minds of these people. Um, so they, they make you question their, their intent. What they say in this paper is that in order to save the government, save the United States, they need to uh, uh, dispel people who believe in these conspiracy theories from believing such things. And so they're going to give them, uh, they're going to cognitively infiltrate and they're going to make them question the reality of that conspiracy. So in the, the reality that they're questioning is that the earth is like, I mean, it's the most, one of the most obvious things that's provable. And uh, they convince us that, or they convince those that are duped that they can't believe their own eyes, that uh, right. know, the moon has its own light, gravity doesn't exist. You know, and then when you ask a flat earther, well, what, and they try to explain to you about something getting pulled to the floor. And I say, well, what pulls it to the floor? What's the force? Right. right. And, just, Wah! and then they say they want to kill me or something. <laughs> it, it's, um, so this is, that is the exact thing. And what I kind of mentioned earlier about how it destroys people's personal relationships. Uh, I had a gentleman who wrote a book uh, about, being down the rabbit holes and being a conspiracy theorist. And his book was basically his journey of losing his family and his like wife and kids. They don't like him anymore. And he's, you know, oh, wow. wrote a book uh, sad about that. Uh, I, I'm, I don't remember exactly the guy's name. He was on William Ramsey's show before. Um, but anyway, I sent him back an email and I said, yeah, I think that would be a good idea to talk about that dynamic of like, you know, uh, interpersonal relationships with this kind of journey. And in the email response, I said, as long as it's not 
crazy stuff like flat earth. And he sent me back this email that was like four pages long. Ugh. Just cutting me down. You piece of crap. Blah, blah, blah. Oh. And I'm thinking in my mind, okay, so that's how he treats people. That's uh, why his family left. That's <laughs> why his family. Yes, exactly. And this here, this cognitive infiltration has done that to this poor individual. He's alone now. And he think he writes a book, and he's going to go on some podcasts, and he thinks he's going to find, uh, you know, fulfilling life in that. But his his children, they think he's crazy. They captured a lot of people in the freedom community, a lot, a lot, which is terrible. Very sad. It, it's like it, um, a cult came along and just swooped all these people away. That's what happened. They went with the cult. Yeah. And even if we're looking at conspiracies, it works the opposite of top down compartmentalized conspiracies, you know, pyramid conspiracies work The the few at the top know what's going on. Everyone else kind of down the line just follows orders, but not millions of people in on it. Like, you know, like I, I get to these like balloon launches on YouTube and there's flat earthers on there saying, you know, this guy has like a hundred thousand followers at the most, you know, he's in on it, you know, and that, you know, if there was millions of people in on it, we'd have whistleblowers from space agencies saying, yeah, I used to I used to launch rockets and it's just a cover, man. Space is fake and Earth is flat. Our, our job is really just to hide the shape of the they, Earth. They, have some, they actually like that, believe no? that if this is the Earth, that rockets take off like this and go straight <laughs> up they don't even understand orbital trajectories and they're like why right. is it flying quote sideways it's like it's on an orbital trajectory it, you know it doesn't mean you go or orthogonally straight up well and, what do you mean it goes straight up and then it hits the firmament and it oh, scrapes right. the firmament and That's you right. see the scrape of the watery <laughs> ether behind <Yep>. it <laughs> Well, yeah, they, the whole know, thing it, me, meteors are just pieces of the firmament that have broken loose. Uh, yeah, the Whoops. ceiling. Maybe yeah, that's well, what. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, sorry. like these people believe in harp, right? And <laughs> harp bounces um, rays off the ionosphere around the Earth. How does that work on a flat Earth model? You know? Right. Yeah. Or trajectory of missiles that the military sets out. They have to adjust it to a curve. I don't know. Well, missiles and nuclear bombs are fake, too. Oh, that's Ima right. That's imagine right. not believing or not understanding that um, down is toward the center of the Earth, anywhere on the Earth. And you hear this model that a, a plane would have to continuously point its nose downward to <laughs> be, a, you know, to follow the curvature of the Earth, not even understanding size, scale. Um, yeah. you know, or that gravity pulls on every molecule of that plane right. in the same way. Of course. Like, so of course it doesn't need to redirect because it's being pulled down. I mean, what the, it, that's right. one of the funniest ones, the plane one that people get real mad. It, it really one. all comes from their lack of understanding of scale and proportion. Right. They, they don't understand size. If they really understood size better, um, there's some, there's some videos out there that are called one of them is called better proportions for flat earthers to understand the size of the earth. I actually included this one on the arc drive. I don't know if it's still out there anywhere, but it's a very good one. There's another one that talks about, uh, I'm not really sure who did it, but it's about um, how topologically smooth the planet is. And literally like if, if Mount Everest, you know, it was on a basketball, how tiny it would be. It would be, you wouldn't even be able to feel it. It's like, you know, somebody else drew the surface of the earth to scale and put Mount Everest on it. And it's so unbelievably tiny that you can barely see it. Um, and, you know, we, we think, you know, that the, these guys think that like, uh, you'll be able to see the curvature from a very, very, very small distance upward. It, it's like they, they really just don't have any sense of scale of how uh, really, truly large things are. I know. 
or the spin of the earth. They think the earth, because we don't feel the spin, you know, it's subtle. It's like, and I've been in the space needle in Seattle, they have that revolving restaurant and you don't really notice you're revolving. It's a slow thing. If you're in a plane going 400 miles an hour, you don't feel the speed. Only time you feel the speed is when it changes. So these right. people don't have um, a sense of, of like uh, what I guess you would say just how things work in general. Yeah. Cosmology, all this. I don't, but I don't know. Water can't stick to the surface of a ball is right. one of the things you'll hear a lot from them. Yeah. Cause again, they don't believe that gravity is an attractive force pulling all matter toward uh, yeah. a, a center. And um, you know, uh, they think that the earth spins so quickly it would throw the oceans off of it. I mean, instead of understanding it's massive and it, would only, it only rotates once per 24 hours. I mean, picture a ball rotating once per 24 hours, you know, I mean, and then you just expand the size. Sorry. Uh, Sean, said, we didn't oh, hear that. Yeah. Sorry. I was on mute, but I said, but it's millions of miles per hour. Ooh, yeah. Like, yeah. How much Cause it's a thousand earth? miles per hour. Cause it's a 25,000 mile circumference. Right, right. It, it's really a shame though. I mean, when it comes down to it, it's like it really, what it really is. Uh, I'll wrap up on this idea is that, um, the whole educational system of the planet has failed. Whether the, regardless of the shape of the earth, uh, the educational outreach efforts uh, and the just general educational facilities everywhere on this planet have failed people. Uh, and that really goes to one dynamic parenting because that's the, that's the ultimate avenue or aspect of education of the young that has completely and utterly abjectly failed mm -hmm. and we need better parenting so that people don't grow up to be that ignorant we need parents taking a vested interest in the real education of their child not the indoctrination of the public's oh. Uh -oh. which means to lead second. one out of the darkness of ignorance from the Latin educo, meaning to lead out of. And what you're being led out of when you're truly educated is you're being led out of darkness. And then you can actually see the light and then you can actually receive the light, which is going to teach you true morals. And then you'll be truly raised. You know, the problem is we don't have parents raising their children. We have parents letting their children down. Letting and them that has to change. The government. That's right. The government do Imagine. It. And that's why yeah. we have all of people who can't even understand basic arithmetic, geometry, and astronomy. And right. it, it, that's a sad, sad state of affairs. They graduate, they can't read some of them. Like, right. right. Wow. Not to mention all the degradation just through all the, the media and all the yep. stuff and the chemicals in the water, food, air, you know, it's just... It's yeah. a, it's a gauntlet that we have to run. I mean, it's, it's no easy task, not, you know, not going to lie and tell people it's easy, but you got to take a vested interest in yourself and your own education. And you got to start working to improve. You can't stay where you're at. You know, um, as many people will say, you know, a year from now, you're either going to have a year of progress or you're going to have a year of making more excuses. You know, don't let it be the latter. Make progress. As long as there's steady progress, I think we'll be okay in the long term. But we can't sit still. We can't be stagnant. We have to move in consciousness. We have to grow in consciousness. And uh, that involves setting our ego to the side when it comes to dogmatic belief systems and uh, really employing the truth true truth discovery methodology of the trivium and truly learning objective morality and natural law. When we do those things, there'll be no stopping humanity. That's right. And hopefully that'll be the case at some distant point in the future. And the so. care, the care for others. Like right now, no matter how, like we are sick of flat earth, like we, what, but we're still doing this here for all of you that need to hear it. It's very important uh just just consider the ideas that we have brought forth please yeah. let information into your brain please learn <laughs> we love you and we want you to come to the truth uh this is you know we're not trying to 
beat down anybody. We want no. We everybody is the human family, and we are doing this here, this two-hour show, to welcome you all and to help to maybe help bring some of the light to your brains. Amen. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, there's probably a lot of people that are on the on the fence. They don't really you know want to be on either side, and I just hope to you know be a little, lend a little help to these people that can just kind of see because most of the people that are talking like us are mainstream normies who believe in the system and believe in all the different, uh, you know, uh, organized society. We're not those people. We're, we're trying to speak from within this. And right. that, that, yeah. It's the reality is point. complicated. It's not one way. It's not simple, right? It, it, it it's, you, you have to understand there's nuances to things, yeah. right? When it comes to natural law, it's an absolute because that that's the force that governs behavioral dynamics. But when it comes when it comes to these people's understanding of things, they're operating from a very simplistic, overly simplified worldview. And what people have to understand is that's where religions come out of because they don't push you to think deeper. They don't push you to think in a more complex way. And that's what we're trying to explain to people. Religion doesn't want you to learn and grow. Religion wants you to accept dogma and stay exactly where you're at, know your role, and shut your mouth. Real understanding wants you to grow. It wants you to move. It doesn't want you to stay exactly where you're at. It wants you to evolve and move forward. And that's our hope for humanity. It's not to push a religion onto somebody. It's to encourage them to think for themselves outside the box that has been created for them. If we do that, we're going to see real progress and freedom in humanity. If we don't, it's going to be more of the same. That was perfectly said, Mark. Thank you. So I think that's a good place to end it right there. Uh, All right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for joining us. On Absolutely. Down and Wake the Dead. And we hope that there will be future shows, conversations in the future. Uh, yeah. I'm very, uh, we're, we're, we're very thankful that you blessed us with your, your time and attention, Mark. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Time. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Great interview. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Thank, thank you. you, Mark. Bye-bye. Take care.